Hello guys, in this video, I will be discussing to you the graphs of um, the cosecant functions and the secant functions. So let's start with the graphs of the cosecant functions first. So as we all know, the cosecant functions are the reciprocal functions of the sine functions. So in this, in this um, video, I will be discussing to you on how to graph the cosecant functions using the graphs of the sine functions. Okay, so basically, we will try to graph the sine function, sine function first, and then later on, we will use it to graph the cosecant function. So, in the previous video, I actually discussed how to do the graph of the sine function, and we have this example here, the graph of, this, of the function sine x. So, our goal is to generate the graph of the cosecant x, or the function cosecant x, from this existing graph of the function sine x. So how do we do it? First, guys, is we need to take the asymptotes. In the cosecant function, there are actually asymptotes, and it falls exactly at the intersection of the sine curve and the midline. Okay? So again, the asymptotes will always pass through the intersection of the sine curve and the midline. So in this example, this is the midline actually, and this is the this blue curve is a sine curve. So the intersection between these lines, the sine curve and this uh, midline, is actually um, our basis of the position of the asymptote. So which means the asymptote will always pass through that intersection, and so we have this multiple asymptotes for the cosecant x. Okay, so actually including the y-axis because notice that the y-axis is also passing through the intersection of the sine curve and the midline. So when you are done taking all the asymptotes, you may now consider getting all the maximum points of the sine curve, okay, and also the minimum points. So when I say maximum points, those points... um. Um, uh, exactly falling at the at this at this height of the, of the sine curve, so this point, this point, this point, and this point, and then the minimum points are this one, no? the minimum points. So after which you can you can actually start drawing the curve of the cosecant x. So the cosecant x is is um, a curve opening upwards and downwards. Okay, so this is now reproducing the, side, the cosecant x or the curve cosecant x. So below are these curves. So basically, the idea is in this period, for example, the highest point of the, of the curve, of the sine curve, is actually the lowest point of the cosecant curve. Notice that in this, in this, um, in this interval here in the x-axis, the highest point of the sine curve is this one. And then notice that in the cosecant curve, it is actually the lowest point. Um, conversely, we have this point here as the lowest point of the sine curve. And so it is actually the highest point of the cosecant curve this time. Okay? So that's how easy we graph the cosecant x. By then, you may try to remove the graph of the sine x. And so you can focus the graph of the cosecant x. Okay, that's it. Now we have another example here. We have this function for, uh, for cosecant of the angle 2 times x plus 3 minus 2. So we can relate this by drawing the curve first um, represented by sine. So we have this um, function f of x equals 4 sine of the angle 2 times x plus 3 minus 2. So we will basically use this function to generate the curve or to generate the, the graph of the function cosecant, cosecant, okay? So A equals 4, B equals 2, and so the period is actually equal to I, okay? So we substitute the value of B, and so we, we have actually come up with the value of 2 pi over B, which is equal to I. C equals 3, so there's a horizontal shift, and then B is equal to negative 2, so there is a vertical shift. Okay, so we have to set this um, this line here, aligned with 4 of the y-axis, and negative 4 of the y-axis as well, because a is equal to 4. Okay, now we have this middle point. Um, when I graph the trigonometric functions, I always set 
uh, the middle point. I always look for the middle point. Okay, so this is the origin here, and then this is the middle point. This is the period. So actually, I can generate now the curve here. And so I can actually translate that one here or shift. I, also, I actually discussed this one, this one already in, in the previous video. So if you have not watched it, I suggest you watch it first before, before continuing to this part here. Okay, so this is the graph of the sine function. And so, okay, reproducing it. And also on the other one. Now, sad to say, we don't have enough room to graph the cosecant function. Okay, right? Because there's no space here down. So, I actually prepared another slide here. This is just exactly the same graph in the previous slide. So, I just made um, a little space, a little room for, for the graph of the cosecant function. So, this time, what will we do? We will take, or we will actually draw the asymptotes. Again, always remember that the asymptotes will always pass through the intersection of the curve and the midline. So this blue line is actually the midline, right? This blue line. This is the midline of the sine curve. And then this yellow, the yellow points here are the intersection between the sine curve and the midline. And so the asymptotes will always pass through these points. Now you may take, you may take the maximum points, the same as what we have done a while ago. And then the lowest points or the minimum points, we start drawing the curve. Okay. So this is basically the graph of this of the cosine curve that we had we had in the previous slide. Okay, so that's it for the cosecant cosecant function. Actually, we there's there's no um, big difference in in graphing the the secant functions. It's just that we have, we have, um, what's this? We have a different mother function because the mother function for cosecant function is the sine function since the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So here, since we are dealing with the secant function, and so we will be using the graph of the cosine function, but the same method will be applied. So let's just say we have this um, cosine function here. We will use this one to graph the the secant x okay so we have f of x equals secant x this is a this is um, our goal we will be using this blue graph here of the cosine x in order to graph um, the function secant x the same with the cosecant x so we will still consider um, the asymptotes exactly the same rule okay so the asymptotes will still pass through the intersection of the, um, the cosine curve and the midline. The same way as well, you have to take the, the maximum points and then draw the curve that represents the secant function. Okay? And also the minimum points, as I said, exactly the same. Mm, that's it. That is the graph of the secant function. So the difference is just we are basing on the cosine function instead of the sine function. Of course, because the secant function is the reciprocal of the cosine function, or the mother function of secant function is the cosine function. So, of course, we will use the cosine function to generate the secant function. Okay? So, another example is this one, the same way. This time, we have 2 secant of 4, x minus 3, plus 2. So, to graph that green function there on the screen, I will try to graph the blue one first, okay, and use it to graph the green one. So A equals 2 this time. And so we have to set these um, broken lines here. Okay, so the graph of the cosine function will not exceed to these lines. So we'll start on top or at the, at the maximum point of the cosine. So you have 2 pi over b as our, our period. Substituting the value of b will give you pi over 2. So basically the, the period will be until here. Okay, at this point of the x-axis. But then again, it will not actually pass through that point. Instead, it will pass through the maximum point aligned to that period. And then we drop this point here, the midpoint. And so we can start drawing the curve. This is the curve representing the cosine function. Again, that is not our goal, okay? 
So since we have c equals negative 3 and b equals 2, we have to consider the um, the horizontal shift and the vertical shift. I discussed this one in the, in the, in the previous video. As I said, um, I suggest you watch the previous video first before continuing with this one. So it moves up two units. And so then actually relocate um, the horizontal lines for the broken lines. Clean up. Then we have this midline. And so these points, 3.8, 3.4, 6.9. And I will not repeat this one. It will be redundant already. I'll do that. So we have this graph of cosine of or two cosine of four times x minus two plus two this time. Also on the, on the on the left side we have these points there. And we have this graph of this um, function. To do one. Okay. Remember this is not our goal. Our goal is to graph the secant function. So we will now use the intersection again, the intersection of um, the midline and the curve line will be the basis of the position of the asymptotes. So the asymptotes will pass through um, that point of intersection between the curve line and the midline. Now, after getting that, you will actually, or we will actually use the, the black points this time. So it's actually the maximum points and the minimum points to graph the curve representing the secant function. Okay, so this is not a graph of the green function. f of x equals the 2 secant of 4 times x minus 3 plus 2. Okay, so that's all for the cosecant function and the secant functions. Just don't um, exchange the reciprocals. Please remember that the design function has a reciprocal function cosecant and the cosine function has a reciprocal secant function. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you and good night.